Hey everybody, it's Dab Girl Dab. Well, today we're gonna do an unboxing, and I don't, I've done one of these, maybe two, and I'm probably not gonna do a lot of them, but this is pretty darn exciting. <laughs> I poked around and looked at all of my block and tackle options for the boom. And it's also a critical component to raising the mast from the tabernacle because it's going to do the pulling to lift that mast up in place. So I need something pretty big. And I'm a girl six feet tall. I have big hands for a woman. And um, plus I got Lyme disease. I don't want to have a situation where I'm trying to hold on to a little three-eighths inch cord because that's not comfortable to me. Everybody's got their own feelings about it, but I went bigger because I always go bigger. So I bought half inch. And so I looked around, I thought about buying just the blocks and putting it together. And I looked at the pricing and I couldn't beat the pricing that I got. This was a fellow out of Morro Bay, ironically. We we're going to see um, his work. And I just want to say thank you very much. And by the way, I'm a Morro Bay pirate class of 1980. <laughs> yes, I'm from that area. I went to high school down there. And um, we used to ride our horses to the beach from Los Osos, actually, to the high school. And then at lunch, we'd ride down on the beach and after school, and then we'd ride the horses back home. And the horses were exhausted at the end of the, the day because we started at feeding at 4 a.m. But um, it was a lot of fun. I love living down there. But let's go back to the unboxing. <laughs> I hope to sail to this boat down to Morro Bay at some point and cruise around there. I've seen that waterfront. I worked in the restaurants on the waterfront for years at the old fishbowl restaurants. They had three of them down there on the Embarcadero. And uh, my grandma had a jewelry store called the Stone Hanger up by the Foster Freeze. And uh, I used to go get her a milkshake every day up there. And then my dad made custom lost wax casting jewelry in the back. And I used to cut cabs and stones and all kinds of stuff there. It was fun. Great way to grow up. Anyhow, um, so the boat. <laughs> all right, so let's see what's in the box, Deb. What's in the box? So excited about this. Can't even tell you. Look at this beautiful rig. Holy cow. She's pretty. She's going to work just terrific on the boat. So, what we've got here is some really nice Harkin blocks. Look at that. They spin beautifully. Everything's brand new. And uh, we've got a nice this pin up here, this will attach to the boom, will come here, and this will go to the top of that. And, of course, this gives you another place to terminate your line. Let me unravel the line real quick. And let's talk about this line. Isn't this beautiful? I think this is a 12 braid. Uh, it's very heavy, so you can tell it's a really good quality line just by its weight. Um, it's marine grade, all that great stuff. I got 50 feet. I probably need more, but we're going to raise the mass pretty soon and find out if it's enough. If it's not, I can easily use this in other places on the boat and um, not worry about it. And so then on the bottom here is what's called a fiddle. And I guess you could play it, but one of the things I like is... Um, that, you know, you can adjust the angle by taking these screws out on each side and moving this um, block in certain directions. This gets mounted to the floor in my cockpit. There's a big bolt there, and so um, that will go into there until I change it up, and I might put this on a track um, overhead. But the neat thing about this being adjustable is that I can adapt to those changes at will. And it's got a nice cleat system here so when you get everything just right and you want it to hold you just pop that in place and then when you want to change it you just pop that baby out and there you go so let's see it in action 
All right, well, I don't have the boat set up yet to put this in, but now that this block is here, we'll be able to uh, put this on pretty soon and we'll see it in action. So I'm gonna just park that baby right here and I'm gonna be the load. Oh, isn't that great? Nice and smooth. Nice. And that this is what's called a four to one purchase, which means you've got four times as much line coming out of here as what you're going to end up in your final movement. But it gives you four times the power. So if that sail is hauling and pushing, say, 100 pounds of pressure, which will obviously be more, then I'm going to see like 25 pounds down here. So that's terrific. Um, I could put a thimble here and then go back up and it would be a five to one block, but I have less overall length. Um, I can make it shorter also. Take out some of the pulleys and you have less purchase, but you've got a greater span. But it's most likely going to stay in this orientation on the boat. So, wow. That's pretty freaking awesome. I'm just very happy with that. And then I want to talk a little bit about buying on eBay. Because a lot of people say shit about eBay sellers. But then they go and they buy from some big brand company who happens to always be selling on eBay. So this fellow was on eBay. I found him. He's got a lot of these rigs that he sells. Um, I'll put a link to his site at the end of this video because I want to thank him for his good work and the fact that he got me this at a reasonable price and for most sailors um, you're probably not dealing on a disability income like I am um, this was very reasonable so thank you so much I'm very grateful um, it's gonna end up on our little miracle boat and um, I hope to get her in the water this year and we'll make some videos and all of our videos are going to display this beautiful hark and block and tackle so you know I think that's pretty cool very cool. That makes me happy. It's one of the last pieces that I needed to get the, the mast raised up. So there we go. I guess by now you can tell I'm not like all the other girls. <laughs> I have a lot of different interests. And um, I don't know. I mean, I've had some people in my past say, Deb, you're more male than a lot of men that I know. But yeah, I just, sexuality is a fluid thing in my world, and I just am Deb. Um, I'm very mechanically oriented, and I like putting things together and building stuff. I'm good at it. I've been to engineering school. Cal Poly, in fact. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like to do a lot of different things. I'm very diverse. But kudos so much, and thank you. Thank you so much to the wheelers down in Morro Bay who sold me this on their site. On eBay. Yay! For eBay. <laughs> Let's talk also about sizing a little bit. Now, this boat is going to be set up to use in the Pacific Northwest. And for people who haven't lived here, that means it has to be much more rigorous and more thought out. And you have to have more careful planning. And that you should always upsize your gear one or two sizes just for that reason. That's also the reason that I went with half inch because this is the Northwest. We can have huge storms hit us and gales and conditions that a three eighths uh, halyard main sheet not gonna hold up here. So I don't be broken down in those conditions and not be able to move or to be fighting equipment that's undersized. I'm just not wired that way. I never have been. I always over-engineer everything I do. And this block and tackle, no exception. <laughs> but I did get a lot of verbal communication with the seller online. And he told me after a review in my boat, he said, I absolutely was correct in my purchase. So thank you for that wisdom and that insight. My instincts told me that that was correct and my preference told me it was correct. So. Build your boat the way you want. I'm going to build mine pretty robust. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for putting up with my yammering here now. And, you know, let's go back and look at some boat jewelry as I close out. Woohoo! Okay. 
I'm so excited. Look at this thing. Stick. 